Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will we are starting with the stack basics, uh, the coding of the stack basics, and uh, we have already discussed about the stack basics in the theory lectures uh, uh, uploaded earlier. We just need to recall them. What are those basic operations related to the stacks? So for insertion of an item in the stack, we need the push operation, and uh, uh, for a removal of an item from the stack, we need pop, and to display the top item from the stack, we need stack pop. To uh, to define all these functions, we first need to have a structure of the stack. Let's say we are considering uh, only the integer items would be accommodated in this stack. So for that, I need to declare an array. Let's say the array is of size 10. It means the stack can contain maximum 10 elements. We need to have a top. That is the indication of the top of the stack. And uh, if the stack does not have uh, does not have any element the top will be minus 1, uh, the, which is the invalid index of the array. If the top is at 0, it means we have one element. If the top is at 1, it means we have two elements at 0 index and 1 index. Similarly, if the top is at 2 index, it means we have three elements, one at 0 index, one at uh, 1 index, and one at 2 index. So this is the declaration of the stack. After this, we can consider that we have uh, an object of this stack as a S. Fine. and then we need to define the push function. In this push function, we are considering that an integer item has been given to us which is to be inserted. For insertion of this item, uh, we need to update the top pointer wherever it is, from wherever it is. Let's say the top is at minus 1. In that case, uh, I need to bring it to 1 and then insert an item. So, at top, s dot top is equals to s dot top plus 1 means the increment in the top uh, top index. After that, in the item array at the top position, we need to insert this item. So s dot item uh, s dot top this is smallest. S dot item s dot top is equals to x. So this way the element has been inserted at the top. Now if I have to remove an element from the stack, in that case uh, the, the removal of an item will take place from the top. So we need to save the top element which is there in the item array at the top position in some x variable. After this I need to decrement this top. By 1 and then whichever item we have uh, captured in the x variable that needs to be returned. So pop function is returning an integer item which is which is the deleted item from the top. So x is the variable which we took from our side, that's why we need to declare it here in the item in the pop function. So this is the push function, which does not return anything. So we are uh, declaring its uh, return type as void. And pop functions returns an element, that's why its return type is set as integer. Then let us execute the, this uh, these functions. Before that, we need to initialize the stack. Initialization of the stack means uh, it does not contain any element in the beginning. That's why the top index of this stack has been declared as minus 1. After declaring it to minus 1, we can call the push function and let's say we are inserting an item 100 in the stack. Let's say we are inserting another item which is 200. So 200 has been inserted in the stack. Another time we are doing the push operation. So 300 has been inserted in the stack. After this, if we call the pop function, it will, be, it will remove the top element. So the last item which is inserted is 300, that's why the item which will be removed is also 300, okay. So let's say the uh, deleted item has been taken as a variable y, so we need to declare that variable y here. After this, we can just put these items here. So this way, the deleted item can be displayed by the program. So we can just recall what we have done in the main. We have initialized the stack, and uh, initialization of the stack uh, is by setting the top pointer to minus one. Top pointer is if the top pointer is set as zero as the initialization, it means it contains one element. So we need to declare it at invalid index of the array, and that is minus one. We could have declared it minus one, minus two, minus three as well. 
but that would not make uh, a sense because uh, minus, declaring it to minus one means uh, when we update the stop pointer or when we increment the stop pointer by the one, it will bring the position to zero, which is a valid index. So that's why we have declared it to minus one. After this, we are inserting these items. 100 is inserted first, then the 200, then 300. And uh, finally, when we are popping an element, so the, when we pop an element from the stack, the popped item is taken in some y variable. After this, we have printed this popped item. So let us execute this program and let's see if this runs fine. So it, it has no errors, so we can execute it finally and run it finally. So you can see that the popped item is 300. We can uh, give it a more indication just to sort it. Item is present ID. You can see that uh, the popped item here is 300. I just uh, made a mistake with writing the spelling here. It is P O double P E T. So this way the popped item is 300. If you uh, run this pop for uh, one second or if you call this function once again so the next element which will be at the top will be displayed so here after removal of 300 200 is at the top so 200 should have been displayed so let's see if it runs fine yes after the first pop which is 300 the second pop item is 200 fine so this is working fine now after this uh, uh, let's say we have to uh, we, we will have to uh, insert some Exceptional condition also with the push of the pop or pop uh, items, uh, push and pop operations. For example, in the push, uh, if uh, already there are 10 elements in the stack because we have declared the size of the stack as 10, so if there, there, ha there are already uh, 10 elements and we are trying to insert an element, one more element, so we will not be able to accommodate that element. So, this is the condition of the overflow. If we have the full stack and we are trying to insert more elements in that stack, this will be the condition of the overflow. So if the top has already reached to the 9 index, that means 0 to 9 are the valid indexes. Okay. So if top has already reached to 9 index, there is no chance of inserting more element in the stack. So if the top has reached to the maximum position, we cannot insert more element in the stack. So we will print an exceptional condition here, that is stack over place. So since this exceptional condition has taken place or exceptional operation has taken place, that's why we will exit from the program, indicating that there is an abnormal termination of the program. For the for uh, uh, exit, uh, we need to define or we need to include a header file, which is stdlib.h, standard library.h. Okay. Once again, let's see the overflow condition. If the stack has stack top has already reached to the maximum position, uh, we cannot accommodate any more element on the stack. So stack will it will overflow in that case, and we prefer to exit. Similarly, uh, when we are trying to remove an element from the empty stack, that will not be possible. Okay. So if we have the empty stack and we are trying to fetch some item from there, extract some item from there, so that will perhaps will not be possible. So we need to check if the stack top is minus one while doing the pop operation. So removal of an item will not be possible. So this is the condition of the underflow. If you're trying to remove an element from the empty stack, this actually is the condition of underflow. So if top is minus one, stack underflows. And we, this is also an exceptional condition, so we will try to we prefer to exit from the program. So this is the push function and this is the pop function. In both the functions we have added the exceptional condition. We can define the, uh, another operation which is the stack top. 
stack top operation does not uh, remove anything from the stack it just displays the top item so stack top is the name of the function and uh, it returns the top item from the stack but it does not remove that so we can see that uh, the top item has been saved in some x variable and then we are returning that x so this way we are able to return the top item so let us uh, call these functions one by one again. So we have pushed an item 100, we have pushed an item 200, we have pushed an item 300. Let's say we have popped an item, we have again popped an item. After popping this, after popping top item, two items, let's say we are going to call this stack top function. Okay, after popping two items, we will remain with only single element. So we are going to call now stack top function. The stack top function will only display the item but will not delete that item. So after the removal of three, uh, 300 and 200, we will remain with 100 only at the top. So we are calling those, uh, we are displaying that item by calling the stack top function. Now let us execute this program. You can see that. The first popped item is 300, second popped item is 200, yeah. and now the top item has been displayed as 100. So after the removal of the 300 and 200, top item is 100. Now let's say after the two top uh, after the two pop operations, we are again calling the pop operation. So when you call uh, the when you're going to call uh, this pop function again it will remove 100 also. After removal of the 100, if you again call the pop operation, so that actually will not be possible. Because you have already removed three items, so removal of the fourth item will not be possible. So we can just run this program and see if the fourth item can be deleted or not. You can see that the stack underflow is the message after the deletion of 100. And apply a slash in just to differentiate it from the other uh, display items. You can see that after the deletion of 300, after the deletion of 200, after the deletion of 100. Uh, when you call the pop function, it is displaying a message that the stack underflows. Fine. Similarly, let's say you are going to do some push operations. Since you are uh, inserting the elements in the stack, let's say we are doing the insertions for many times 300, then 400, then 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. So up to 1000 we have 10. But as soon as you insert 1100 here, you are trying to insert the 11th element in the stack. So let's see if this will work. No, it says that the stack overflows. So since the stack overflows, that means this is the condition, this is the exceptional condition which has taken place. We had the 10 elements of the stack and we have tried to insert more element in the stack. But since the stack size was declared as 10, it is not possible to insert 11th element. Now, to make it a uh, generalized one, or the size of the stack uh, as a better choice, we can declare the size of the stack as a macro here. Hash define. Let's say stack size as 100. So, stack size is a macro. Which has been set as 100. We take it 10 also, right? As we look at this program. Okay. And uh, wherever we are going to define the overflow condition with this stack, it was uh, 1 less than the stack size. So this would be stack size minus 1. So when the program will compile, uh, during the pre processing step, the stack size will change to 10. 
fine. So this is this way you can do the coding of the stats. And uh, we need to understand one more thing uh, with this program that uh, this stack has been declared as a global. So if the stack has been declared as a global, it means that the push and the pop functions will work only with a single stack. The object that you have declared as S, this push and the pop functions will work with this only. If you want that uh, your program should contain more than one stack, let's say S1 and S2 are the two stacks that you want to work with. So you will have to write two different set of push and the pop operations with the different names. So if you do not want that, in that case, you do not declare this, uh, this structure globally. Bring it to main. Okay, bring it to main. This is the main. So, uh, bring this stack, stack as into the main and then you see that as we are, I have deleted this s dot top as minus one. So you can create another function. You can take define another function. Let's say that function is initialize. So in the initialization function, we declare this s dot top as minus one. So the one-line statement which was written inside the main, we have uh, brought it to uh, initialize function. Once again, come to the main. So in the main, we have declared this, and now we're going to call the initialize function. In, in the initialize function, I will pass this as such that uh, the function should know that on which of the stack the initialization process has to be done. Okay, so we are passing this as here. Similarly, the push function will also require the S variable. Program should know that uh, which of the stack we need to insert. Now, if you pass this as as such in the push and the pop functions, let's say we are calling the pop function also. Call these functions as such. You are actually calling these as uh, these uh, functions with the values. So S is a value that you are passing here. But if you want that the function should make changes to this stack, then you should pass it with a reference because uh, if uh, the function has made some changes, if those changes are required to be reflected to the variable of the main, in that case you need to pass this as a reference. The push and the pop are actually, and similarly, initialize also are making some changes to the code or making some changes to the stack. So that's why we need to pass them by the reference. So come to the initialize function first. The address of S has been passed. So since address has been passed, we need to accept that in some pointer variable. We need to take a pointer of a structure variable. And after this, uh, we need to Declare it as so the simple dot has been changed to this arrow dot. Arrow is also uh, pronunciated as a dot only. So the only thing is that uh, this dot has got changed to this arrow. So we have passed the address of the S needs to call that reference. So that needs to be accepted in the pointer variable. We have passed the structure variable. That's why we have taken the structure pointer from the game. Similarly, in the post function also. We need to have a stack. We have passed the address, so we need to accept that in the pointer variable. Wherever you have used the simple dot, we need to change that to this with the arrow one. And then this one, similarly, this one, and similarly, this one. Okay, pop function is also making some changes. Pop function is uh, removing an element from the stack. So that's why we need to have the point available here as well. And wherever we have used the simple dot that needs to change to so add one dot. So 
these are the changes that those are made. I will make some changes to the stack top also, but after some time. So we have actually uh, done the changes in the push at the top, push top and initialize functions. After building, if it has any problems, but it, it should not have any problem. You can see that uh, uh, once we have made the changes, it is not uh, giving you any error. It is just that uh, the simple variable needs to be changed to the pointer variable. So you have inserted three items and then you have removed one item. You see that 300 is the item which was removed. You simply need to apply slash and here just to have a better visibility. So you have inserted three items 100, 200, and 300, and then you have removed one item 300. So this way we are able to. Change the same program into callway reference program. It means if you need to uh, use multiple stacks in the same program, you can declare those different stacks here. For example, if you need to work with two stacks, you declare S1 and S2 here, and when you are calling the function initialize, initialize S1, and then you can initialize this S2 as well by calling the same function. Okay, similarly, if you want to insert uh, in the S1 stack, in the S1 and then in the S2 stack. So the same push and push function is working for the two different stacks. Similarly, you can call this uh, call function for the S1 and S2 stack both. Okay, if you just need to check if it is working fine, the push function. With the S1 stack is inserting two items. So the top item in the S1 stack is 200. Push function with the S2 stack is inserting 300 items. So top item in the second stack is 200. So we need to check if it is working fine. <coughs> from the first stack, 200 item has been removed, and from the second stack, 300 item has been removed. Fine. Now, what about the stack top item? Uh, the stack top does not make any change in the function. Okay, so if the stack top does not uh, uh, change in the stack, it means we do not need to make it a call by reference function. We do not need to pass uh, the arguments with the reference. So the value will also work. So let's say in the first stack we have inserted 100 and 200. After inserting, uh, after removing this item, first item from the we are calling this stack top. The stack top with no reference, we are just passing this S1. It will display the top item. So after the removal of the 200 from the first stack, we remained with the, the item number 100. So it should display 100 here. You can see that 200 was the item which was removed, and then 100 is the stack top item. And then from the second stack, we have to do this string. So it is working fine. Okay, so this way we have we are done with these stack basics. In the next uh, uh, series of the lecture, in, in the next lecture, we will see how to uh, reverse the given string and how to find the palindrome of the given string. Uh, how to find if the given string is a palindrome. Thank you.